Hi, Jeff Frick here at the Silicon Angle offices in Palo Alto. I'm here for a CUBE conversation. As you know, we usually go out to the events to extract the signal from the noise, but we're, we sometimes like to have friends into the, the CUBE uh, itself. So today we have Howard Lick. Howard, welcome to, uh, to the CUBE. Thanks, great to be here. So, uh, you know, we're covering all the great trends right now in technology and cloud, mobile, social, big data, consumerization of IT are really the hot things going on in the enterprise. And why we invited Howard in is because uh, not only is he playing in all those spaces, but he's using them in a, in a unique way, not to necessarily save business money or not necessarily to, uh, to get your order there faster or provide better customer service to a commercial entity, but really more for a social good and for a social cause. Um, so it's Tidepool, right, Howard? Exactly. So why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what Tidepool is all about? Sure. Well, uh, Tidepool is an open source, not-for-profit effort, and we're building an open data platform and better applications to help reduce the burden for people with type 1 diabetes. So you're using open source? Yep. You're using cloud? Yep. You're using big data? We are. And uh, and you've got a terrific experience in, in, in you know consumerization and UI, so you're using that experience. Absolutely. You're covering everything from uh, it's amazing, families and, and the actual patients and their support group and families, to clinicians, research institutions, donors, who did I miss? Uh, let's see, doctors, researchers, patients, parents, uh, even the FDA we hope will, even the uh, FDA. will help out. So it's, it's really a, a great story of using these trends and really, you know, kind of, if you started a company today, and when, when did you start Tidepool? Uh, Tidepool was officially incorporated in uh, late 2012. It was actually a different name and we renamed it to be Tidepool okay. in May of 2013. But it's really using the best of what's available today in the technology world from open source and cloud to support distributed uh, employees, distributed user base, distributed constituents in which you're serving, and it's a pretty phenomenal story. Well, so thanks. let's jump into it a little bit. Um, let's talk a little bit about both the products side of what you're trying to do, as well as the platform, right? Because that's always the technology exactly. conundrum. Do, everybody wants to build a platform, but nobody buys a platform, so right. you've got to have some products. So that's how exactly do we first right. drop a, talk about the products? Sure, so uh, we're, we started with a couple of applications. The first one's called Blip, and uh, Blip is an application that pulls data in from diabetes devices. I should probably back up and say type one diabetes is a very data intensive disease. A lot of people with type one wear a continuous glucose monitor, they often wear an insulin pump, they always use a blood glucose meter for finger sticks, and all of that data is necessary to help deliver insulin therapy. When you have type 1 diabetes, you have to take insulin in order to live. But computing the right insulin dose is really hard, and coming up with easy ways to look at all the data in one place at one time is what Blip does. Okay. So Blip is our first application, and it pulls data in from all those different devices, makes it easy to see it in one place at one time, both for the patient and their parents and their doctors to actually look at the same thing on one screen at the same time. So how does the data get into, the, into Blip? The short answer is by any means necessary. Okay. So uh, the right way to do it is to get the data directly from devices. The industry isn't quite there yet, so we're demonstrating the value of that. So okay. in some cases, we reverse engineered the protocols that these devices speak so that we can get data out of the device. In other cases, we're scraping data out of the clouds, these vertical proprietary back-end cloud systems that the different device makers make. Ultimately, what we want is for the industry to publish their protocols so that we can incorporate them into the Tidepool platform, and then it's much easier both for us and other people to build applications on top of it. And are the devices either the, something that they wear or when they, they take a blood test, um, are those connected devices? You know, inter, uh, you know the next thing, internet of, uh, of everything, internet of machines, industrial internet, you know, those things too. Do they have existing connectivity built in, is that a new thing, kind of what, what's the state of that, that, the touch, I guess, kind of the last mile in terms of uh, the, the getting the data? It's a great question, and really the diabetes industry is really lagging behind what we're seeing happening in consumer electronics. So, okay. you know, I'm wearing my Fitbit right now, and that talks Bluetooth LE to my phone, and the data automatically gets to the cloud. The diabetes devices don't yet do that. And part of that is it's, these companies are really, uh, subject to some pretty intense regulatory oversight, and darn well they should be because we're delivering a deadly hormone to our kids and, and adults with type 1 diabetes. So right now, we're really at the beginning. So there are insulin pumps, continuous glucose monitors, 
blood glucose meters, finger stick meters. Typically, they have their own proprietary interfaces. Sometimes it's through a USB port, sometimes okay. it's through a proprietary wireless protocol. The industry is starting to move towards the obvious way of connecting to things, such as through Bluetooth LE. And basically what we're doing is we're building the software that makes it easy to use the data once we get there. But we're also connecting to existing devices so that we can make things better for people with type 1 right now. Okay, and then there's the new uh, the new Google Contact thing, which I saw. If that really works, it's going to be pretty incredible. Yeah, so, uh, I was actually at an alumni thing speaking to some um, there were some uh, Claremont kids who I guess had interned on that project and yep. it had just been announced that day and they said it's very exciting. It is. That it's, a, it's a really good way and an unobtrusive way uh, t to get that data and I'm sure it will be connected if it's if it's Google. Absolutely right? and so we've sent them a note we would love for data from the Google glucose sensing contact lens to go straight into the Tidepool platform. Awesome. Okay so now let's talk about the other side of the equation which is people doing research to try to help with the disease. So how does Tidepool play in that space? Yeah great great question and so we're building the Tidepool platform which both has client-side components that talk to devices but also has a back-end cloud component to it. And the thing that's really interesting and important about type 1 diabetes is there is so much data collected. It, your continuous glucose monitor takes a reading every five minutes. You're taking dozens of finger pricks per day, you've got basal rates of insulin, and all of that gets put in our cloud. We treat the data like you might treat a financial transaction. We immediately give it a cryptographic di digital signature, and then as data is transformed through the system, you can always go back, you can always see the provenance of the data, and that's a really important thing in order to be able to audit the safety and efficacy of not just our system, but devices that talk to our system. Once that data is in the cloud, then you can do some really incredible things. So you can start, if you're a researcher, you might, for example, be studying what's, what are known as postprandial uh, glucose spikes after you eat a meal. How high does your blood sugar go and then how quickly does the insulin bring it back down? So you'd love to be able to have access to a big database and say, show me all the data for a 12 to 14 year old girl from 100 to 105 pounds that's at this point in her menstrual cycle and perhaps had vigorous exercise two hours after the meal. That might be what you're studying with the goal of trying to come up with a pattern recognition algorithm right. to help make insulin dosing better. Right. Okay. So it's still really about insulin dosing. Accuracy is really the the big hard to solve and immediate exactly. problem. Exactly. And insulin is a deadly drug, right? If you give yourself too much insulin, you can very quickly have a seizure or go into a coma. Or unfortunately, about one in 20 people with type 1 diabetes die of what's called nocturnal hypoglycemia, where you actually die during your sleep due to low blood sugar. To low blood sugar. Now, on the, on the data that you're collecting, so obviously you are collecting stuff from people that are connected with Tidepool. Are you also pulling at other, are there other databases that you can pull to get that that pool of data bigger uh, as you grow your um, customer base, if you will. Absolutely, and, and a perfect example again is exercise data, right? Okay. Exercise has a big impact on your metabolism and your insulin dosing. And so we are actually working to get exercise data off of devices like Fitbits and fuel bands. Another great example is meal data. It, uh, we have a mobile application called Nutshell that makes it really easy to keep track of what you ate and where you ate it. And then that context helps you see how your body reacted to that meal and helps you make a better insulin dose next time you eat the same thing. Great. So I want to shift gears a little bit about it and shift into the technology, just the technology environment in which we live today. Um, you were at, at uh, TiVo, you know, back before there were DVRs. You've been at Pixar, which was cutting edge, you know, heavy lifting technology mm -hmm. to make movies. You were at Linden Labs doing virtual reality stuff. So you've been very involved in Silicon Graphics, right? Back in the day, we were at the exactly. History Museum uh, doing a show the other day, which is the old Silicon Graphics That's building right. before they build the pre-Google Google headquarters. But talk a little bit about the tech environment today to build a tech company using the, the tools that are available and how different that is than just, you know, just a few years ago. It's really an incredible time to start a new technology company. Um, we're 11 employees, um, almost everyone is an engineer. All you need right now is a laptop and a Wi-Fi connection <laughs> and you can start a company. And frankly, that's all we've got. And, and we're building incredible software. We're leveraging Amazon Web Services as our back end. We're leveraging incredible web libraries like D3 for doing visualizations. And so it's really an amazing time to have an idea, a vision for doing some good in the world. And you can just sit down and immediately 
create code that does it. Right. And then the other piece of it that I found interesting doing a little research before you came in is your team. Not only do you have basically no software or hardware infrastructure of your own, you know, leveraging all these services, but your team, most of them aren't here. So you've really done a good job of, of collecting assets in the form of people that are distributed all over the world. So talk again how different the world is today than it was just not that long ago that you can actually execute with, with, with this distributed team. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's really amazing. So we, we've created this team, I like to think of this Venn diagram of people who care passionately about type one diabetes, people that like the approach that we're taking, which is an open source, open data platform, people that are really good engineers or really good UI designers, and then people who could quit their day job and actually do this. And I think there's probably about 20 people like that in the world, and Tidepool hired 10 of them wow. wherever they are. Right. So we've got an engineer in New Zealand, we've got two UI designers and an engineer in Copenhagen, another engineer in France. Um, we also have an engineer in Austin, Texas. We meet every single day using Google Hangout. We do our stand-up meetings uh, using Google Hangout as a video conference system, which is free. It's pretty incredible. And yeah, the world is, is flat. Um, now, all that said, I still fly people in a couple of times a year. There, nothing takes the place of actually right. sitting down to a meal together, having some fun together, building trust and camaraderie right. as a team. But then we all go back to our homes and uh, we get great work done. Yeah. And, and, and the Google Hangouts work out a lot better after you've already after you've spent some time together. It's That's a, it's exactly a whole right. different uh, kettle of fish. So um, we're, we're getting towards the end of our time. Two, two questions. One is kind of what's your big next thing you're trying to knock down? What's the next big objective um, vision that you're trying to, to do from the company point of view? And secondly, what can people do to help? It's a, it's a, it's a great cause. Um, again, it's using technology for good, not that there aren't other people that have done it in the past, but I think it's very innovative. Um, wily old tech veteran who basically said enough of the uh, enough of the what I've been doing before you know let's let's really put this passion to work and really try to solve the problem of leveraging these tools so what's the next big thing you want to knock down and then second how can people help that's great um, so we're working on our first two applications right now blip and nutshell uh, blip is about to start a pilot study at UCSF they've been a great partner as we uh, develop our, our systems um, then we'll work on Nutshell, and we've got a couple of uh, very prominent diabetes clinics like Jocelyn and Stanford also interested in helping us with clinical or pilot study trials. The Tidepool platform, as we've been building it, we realize is incredibly valuable for what's known as the artificial pancreas, which is a closed loop system that combines a continuous glucose monitor with an insulin pump. And what we've said to the researchers working on the artificial pancreas is, let us build the cloud backend, let us build the telemetry system, let us build the monitoring and visualization. You focus on the pump and the control algorithm. A phenomenal opportunity yeah. for them. Right? Exactly. You just We're good at building software. We're good at visualization, they're and they're, they're they're very happy to leverage what we're doing. Oh, so that's fantastic. the next big thing for okay, us. Okay, good. And what's your time frame on that? Well, it, it's it's ongoing. ongoing so uh, yeah. we're so. in discussions right now. We're building the type the type pool platform as we go. Okay. We started prototyping artificial pancreas telemetry systems already. We think there are uh, several building blocks along right. the way, like decision support systems and a clinical research panel. So we're going to keep working on and that. And it's agile, this year right? And next you just go right. You got to stand up. We don't. Uh, you don't spec the whole thing out and build it anymore, right? You just go step That's by right. step. That's right. We're moving fast and we iterate every day. Good, good. And again, so then what, what can people do to help? Uh, great question. So a bunch of ways that people can help. The type 1 diabetes community is a wonderful community and we've already gotten lots of offers for help. Uh, if you're an open source developer, we'd love to get contributions. You can find us at uh, GitHub uh, under Tidepool underscore org. Um, if you are a high net worth philanthropist, we would of course love donations. We're a nonprofit. We do intend to be a self-sustaining nonprofit. We'll generate just enough revenue to continue the cause, but we're raising money right now to get us to mm -hmm. that point. Terrific. If you're someone who does documentation or someone who does testing, we can always use the help as well. Great. So Howard, thanks for coming in. I really appreciate it. You know, when I learned more about the story, I thought we got to get we got to get Howard in because not only is it a great story about doing good things, but but it has the it 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 has the same tech spin that we talk about every day. It's just a slightly different application and one that's really done for good. So thanks for dropping by. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. All right. So Jeff Frick uh, signing off here from the Palo Alto offices of SiliconANGLE. It's been a cube conversation with Howard Look. We'll see you next time. Thanks.